Uh, first of all, two of the favorites, I mean, thank you very much. I appreciate that because I will accept it. I don't take compliments well, but I will take that, Annette, and run with it. Uh, I am lucky enough to sit here uh, and be uh, site cha or chapter, site global president for the last two years and, and being able to do things like this. Something just blows my mind, and we'll get into AI a little bit later, but, like, guys, just, like, it blows my mind that we can sit here. I think COVID caused a lot of this to be able to actually happen to force us as site global um, out of our archaic state into something that um, to let technology in a little bit. So this has been really cool. So thank you to brain dates. This is incredible. Um, definitely prior to, I was like a little nervous about how's this going to work. And, and frankly, uh, a lot of ideas started flowing on how we could use this down the road uh, with just within site and hopefully within your own chapters and, and your own companies, you can do the same. Uh, but without further ado, uh, Ms. Faye Bouchine, I, I definitely want uh, to introduce you and uh, for you to say hi to the group and tell them who you are, where you are, and how beautiful your background is. Uh, I'd love to uh, hear from you. Okay, well, first of all, thanks, Kevin, and thanks, everyone. What a great platform this was. And yeah. I can't help but think about how it wasn't this way 42 years ago when I joined SITE. You know, the only way to communicate was by telephone and by fax machine, and it took days you mailed packages back and forth across the ocean and waited five days to hear back from Europe and so on. And it's uh, it's really a fantastic world. And I'm very optimistic about how much even further it's going to go in the next 50 years. So that's great. Um, yes, I am a former president of SITE in 1988. I joined in 1981, which would be 43 years ago. And I walked into a room in New York City with about 100 people. I didn't know one person. I wasn't an East Coaster. I was an American, and site was predominantly then American, but quickly became international, really, within the first 10 years. And <clears throat> somebody came up to me. His name was Jim McNabb, and he'd been a, one of the founders, and he welcomed me. And uh, just this young girl from the Midwest. And so from that journey, um, it, it was, uh, or from that day, it was, it's been quite a journey. And I've stayed a member of this organization all, the, all this time, primarily because I was so involved in it. But it is one of the only organizations that I think you form lifetime memberships in. I've been in all of them, MPI, ASAE, IACA. Uh, GBTA and so on. And this is the one that the relationships and the lifetime friendships have really lasted in. And I think it's because we're a unique, intimate group. So thank you for keeping me a part of it. Thank you for inviting me, Kevin, today. And I'll turn it back to you. Well, thank you. I, you know, first of all, thanks for being here, Faye. It was, it was very important for those of you that were in New York City in January for um, our global conference. We were there and I, I had the opportunity, I've known Faye for years, but had the opportunity to share the stage with her um, and some of our other past presidents in the closing session. And I thought that was such a, a unique session um, to end the end the conference. And, you know, talking a little bit about today, like right now for the next 20 minutes or so, was like kind of what we went through today and like what, what you saw. And then also just talking about where we were at site, where we are today and kind of what we're going to see, maybe not in the next 50 years, but maybe in, in 10 and see what that looks like. Uh, but today was... I mean, again, I just wanted to make a comment on that. We had 136 people that participated today, which is incredible. Something like this is is not easy to do. I think Brain Dates made that easy, and Zoom, uh, in partnership with 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 this all doing this, has uh, made it easy to do this. And on over 31 topics, I liked how it was small, and you could just jump in. And fi I finally figured out how to jump in and out of different topics, but down the road. But I mean, some of the ones that I jumped into talking about AI, talking about the business case for incentive travel, the, the foundation, what the site foundation is doing, um, and then trends moving forward, what that looked like. Um, but with 628 connections on various, on this platform today, again, I think COVID probably took us back to a time that was maybe not sending packages across uh, the United States or anything, Faye, but it definitely caused us back to doing things more simple again. I, I, I think you would agree, right? During COVID, it really, it really took us back to getting back to cherishing moments and memories and, and not being so busy. Um, you know, with that said, you were talking about site 50 years ago or 40 years ago, 42 years ago, you said you became, you walked in that room and 
New York City was the was the first ink to paper of when site was made. So that's why we bookended on 2023 to come back to New York. You know, 42 years ago, we were we were named something different. Talk about really quick about the Society for Incentive Travel Executives is what we once were. What was the main what was the main thinking behind that? Why why executives and not something that we are today, excellence or or anything of that nature? Uh, okay. Well, first of all, the founders, um, as they explained to me, and they were, you know, I joined about seven years after it was founded. So I got to hear these initial founding stories. They felt that the society was all about education. And that word society, we don't hear it so much today, but it it groups that were societies were were associations and they were more educational in nature and less commercial in nature. So the initial uh, cause for joining the site was to become educated about how to how to understand the business case for incentive travel because the founders felt that there were too many people in the market who thought it was travel was a junket travel was uh, that all that all we had to do was put on a trip and give people vacations and and were not properly uh, educated about what the real reason is corporations will buy uh, motivational experiences for their people. And they do it to create, as you all know, by being members of site to, to create loyalty and long term uh, employment and to and to produce better business results than you'd otherwise have without these programs. And so that that was the initial thing, and that's what was different. And so that names of executives meant that these were people that were joined to be become educated. And then the name changed over time to focus more on the process and the practice yeah. uh, of instead of travel. And other presidents saw the need for for doing that. And that's been the great thing about site; it changes as the times change, right? Yeah, and and it, that's it became a broader organization that, that we adapt with the times. I think. You know, yeah. we have such a strong Young Leader program within SITE, and we saw that this year in Las Vegas at the Young Leader Conference. We saw it in New York City um, at the Global Conference as well, and we're starting to turn that into a program, and I think that also allowed that gen younger generation, even perception-wise, that they could be a part of this, right? They could be a part of this association, and that's where I think our membership, we're at an all-time high, and Annette said it earlier, and I think she... I've heard it a hundred times in all the different sessions that we're in about where we are in membership this year. This is where the highest has ever been. Um, I, I was in, I was in, uh, what session was I in? The business case, it was, I think it was the business case. Oh, it was a trends. It was the trends. And I was hearing Zoe talk and um, Zoe, if you're still on here, throw your hand up. Um, talk about merchandise a little bit. Merchandise hit like a, it hit a huge stride. And then I felt like it, it dropped a little bit now where it is, it's, it's at an all time high. Uh, as well. Talk about merchandise and what kind of focus that was uh, maybe even 15 years ago compared to what, you know, prior to what, what part of the incentive tro program is that uh, importance right now? Okay. Well, when, when site was formed, uh, definitely merchandise was a focus because first of all, the travel, the trade and the commercial part of, of buying and selling instead of travel, the merchandise and travel were together at one trade show. On one side of the room was was merchandise, things like luggage and handbags and and literally pots and pans for your home and all the things that were were wanted then. Uh, not the not the technology things that people want today for merchandise. And then on the other side of the room was travel. And the, there were times when merchandise was actually bigger than travel, because remember, preceding incentive travel were watches. And and uh, and jewelry and green stamps and all the stamp all the business that uh, all the stamps that were given as rewards for purchasing things that preceded really travel, and so it evolved over time. Then where travel became bigger and a little bit more uh, emphasis on it, and as as it even evolved with jet travel, that more people could travel to trade shows from over from because this started in the U.S could travel to trade shows here and travel to trade shows in Europe and then eventually trade shows on every continent. And then the travel part became bigger and merchandise became a little bit smaller, but it's always been important on the continuum of, of how to motivate people inside companies because there are different ways to do it and different levels of achievement and so on. And it's, and it's always been important for people to, uh, 
to enjoy the gifts of merchandise uh, as part of the reward for, for what they've done. So ebbed and flow through times and actually site's definition in the site history, you'll see sometimes in, actually includes words around merchandise and then, and then excludes, but never, it is, it has never been excluded in the, in the association of site. Yeah. It, gifting has always been important here, but in terms of the main purpose of the organization, it, it, it has, it has the ebbed and flow. Yeah. And that's I because there's other groups that deal specifically now in gifting and merchandise too. Yeah, and hey, if, if anybody has any questions at all, by by all means, throw it in the chat, and we'll we'll see this, and I would love to answer uh, anything that's going on, or or go to the audience on it as well. Eva just uh, plugged into the chat. The brochure kind of shows a history of site, where we were, you know, where we were going uh, over each year, and so take a look at that. It's it's a it's a great piece for for site. You know, I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna prepare, Janice. I I see you on here. Uh, I'm gonna go to you because I was in a session with you, and I hope you'll be okay by talking about this. Uh, we were talking about some trends that were currently going on today and 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 really moving into thank you for unmuting because that shows me that yes i will talk about this for a second <laughs> one of the trends that we were we were discussing that you were saying was the the struggles that we're currently having being overworked um we were we were talking about mental health taking breaks but i loved what you had said um where is it right here you talked about uh, on onboarding Right, that we were talking about onboarding in that session. Can you can you speak to that a little bit? Like, what 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 are you seeing and 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 moving forward? How do you see that uh, moving forward in the future? Like, why is that such a struggle for everybody? Um, to be honest with you, Aline was the one who brought that right. up, not not me. Um, but I can talk to you about onboarding. I think one of the things that we all have to think about in the future is human sustainability. We want to make sure that young people want to come into this industry and be part of it. And I think that, you know, as leaders, our responsibility is to be teachers, coaches, and mentors. We can't turn a blind eye to the young people. And I think we need to definitely, you know, educate them on as to, you know, how to deal with some of the struggles that are happening, whether it be sustainability, mental health, or human trafficking. These are all subjects that, you know, need to be addressed. Um, the big thing for what Event Minds Matter is, and that's my community for those who you don't know, who don't know me, is that I believe that we need mental health training in throughout the associations and part of the certifications, because I think part of making a culture of caring comes from having some emotional intelligence. And a lot of HR people and leaders have never taken a course in emotional intelligence. Now, it's no different than going to university. Those days I called it psychology. Now we're calling it emotional intelligence. So, you know, how you react to somebody who's struggling and, and or somebody, for example, who's human trafficked, you know, you need to understand what the response would be. You need to be able to reach out and recognize that there's a problem. And then you need to understand the language used. It's, it, I think certifications today should be mandatory and have the mental health. We are the right. sixth most stressful job. The first five are mandated for mental health. We're not. Yeah, I, I love, you know, we were talking and I, and I think it was Elizabeth. Sorry, I, I mixed up right when you said the, the, the um, what'd you say? You said leaders, coaches, and teachers. I love that. And that's what I wrote down as well. Uh, that was a huge, a huge part of that. Um, Elizabeth was also in that chat. And again, Elizabeth, if you're on here, I would love you to jump on. If not, don't worry about it. But we we're talking about labels. And it was that um, there was a, a healthy discussion around the fact that in mental health, maybe we don't want to be labeled or something something of that nature. But nowadays, maybe the younger generation is okay with it. So um, that was that was a key thing that I just took from that session that was, hey, it's okay. That's Everybody's up front now because maybe that – that emotional intelligence, Janice, what you were just talking about was being accepting of it too, as a leader that you accept there are things going on with your team and going on in life. I mean, it's outside the job because yeah, we are overworked. We were talking about in the business case uh, uh, for incentive travel and um, I think Susan P, I didn't have her last name from Canada, talked about when is there a downtime anymore? No one has downtime. And, 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 I, and I was thinking about that and it's, it's, there's no, as far as even the booking season, 
the booking season summer for me at least i i work within mexico and the caribbean it used to be down for groups now there is <laughs> there is no there is no di- downtime susan pop in if you i see you just popped in right now pop in if you want on, on this part when we, when we were talking about that but i it's one of those things like where where is that downtime anymore and and to power through we talked about resi- resiliency and that's like a, such a huge trend in the past few years going through covid and different things um but that that room with Mel- and I think Melissa was was leading this room and they're talking about powering through that there's always something somewhere. So whether it be a natural disaster, whether it be crime, whether it be war, economy or something, it's a matter of getting in, um, you know, getting in and just being OK with it. What can your company tolerate? What can your client tolerate? So that was such a huge, a huge trend. Um, hey, Kevin, I'll, I'll jump in. This is Annette yeah. on that one. And <clears throat> Stan led a discussion about kind of the next generation coming into the workplace. And we did talk about that resilience is like, it's like a core competency now. Like, I think if most of you have heard the term VUCA, vulnerability, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, like that's the normal for us. How many tragedies and and disruptions have we all been through and kind of our ability to weather those storms is kind of table stakes for our industry. Yeah, and 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 obviously moving forward, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in Eva. I told her I was gonna bring her in because I to say that I'm not versed on discussing this. I mean, I can talk emotional intelligence all day in in that sense, but artificial intelligence is so beyond me. I barely know what the cloud is. So having someone like Eva discuss it, I would love you to bring up the tool that you were talking about. I know it's a it's it, it might happen. It's 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 a what if. Um, thing, but I would love you to discuss that really quick. Yeah, I think that the group discussion that we had was really interesting. I was just talking about how across the kind of maybe five or six platforms that I use uh, within my role, how I've noticed little AI assist um, prompts coming in. So it'll prompt to write a social media post for me or an email subject line. But every single one of those platforms is building their own AI tool. So I felt like I was feeding all the information to all these different tools and they're nearly taking it all. Uh, we were having this this discussion last week because at I, IBTM and in, in Barcelona AI was certainly a a really strong topic, and is this something that we should be all plugging in together? I think everybody that was uh, on the the various AI sessions they were all saying they were using OpenAI or ChatGPT or they were using it was a kind of a built in tool to their Google Assist, and we were saying should we have like a site AI that we're all plugging in the information and it's learning about our industry and our incentive travel programs that we're running and understands us. Cause I think at the moment there's a lot of human intervention and, and a human touch that has to happen with AI when it comes to anything that we do, because it doesn't quite understand the profile of the people, the qualifiers or, or, or planners. It doesn't understand the differences just yet. And I think the more that we can all use the same tool rather than, you know, the, 2,700 members using different tools. Is there one that we should be using and plugging it into it together so it gets to know who we are um, so that we can start to use it to, to our own advantage? So the, that's kind of the, the discussion that we are having today, which I thought was really interesting. No, I, I like that. And it's, and it's one of those things that um, it's not about just doing a trip anymore. And I was talking with uh, with Nitin about this. He's obviously loves technology and AI and different things. And we talked about chat GPT. Uh, back a few weeks ago and it's like you can plug into it now and say draft me a uh, incentive travel program in switzerland in march of 2025 and it'll give you these options right but the one thing that i that we have the power in doing you talked about that human touch is that creativity we all have that creativity it's just we're not tapping into it right and i i think that's where that robot aspect of ai we need to if we have that tool to be able to just keep inputting we we can create that create that creativity a little bit for uh for those tools because um an incentive travel program is not easy to put together uh i remember really quick i remember my first um sales call ever i'm on the hotel side i walk in and i went in with a client and the client was presenting to their end user and it blew my mind and i knew i could never do that side of the business because what goes into an incentive travel program from nuts to balls a to z is is is, is craziness and that human touch is always needed. AI will never fully be able to do that, but we do need to adopt it at some point. Uh, so Aoife, thank you, that was awesome. Kevin, I just wanna mention there is a new app out there called Event GPT um, that has been designed for our industry. So, you know, it's just it's just been put out, like literally was written about a week ago. 
And I remember everybody was like jumping on it to try and see if they, they wanted to play with it and see what it was like. So. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thanks, Janice. I appreciate that. I'll uh, add one point, Kevin, to the AI discussion. Yeah. If I may. Uh, when you talk about the span of time, we used to have to, when we called on a company to, to sell them an incentive program, do weeks and weeks of research on the company to understand what their strategies might be internally so that we could relate to them and construct an incentive program that would, would help them improve their business results. AI will completely change that because you will be able to understand a, a, your client's strategies much better because you, you will have the use of that intelligence because in the background, everything will be gathered about that company for you. So I think that's another perspective on, on why Aoife's point uh, about understanding the profile of the participant, but not just the participant, the participant's company will really help us in the future. And it, it'll be really exciting for, for site to uh, not just follow, but to lead in these trends for our industry. Yeah, that's, I mean, again, it's something that we all can learn from, whether it be nuts and little little things or big nuggets. So thank, yeah, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love, Annette, I would love to highlight you, spotlight you really quick. Um, you know, we have about eight minutes left. Uh, Faye, if you could stay up there as well. Um, I would love to talk about the foundation a little bit and where we're going as site, because I think it's very important that I know there was a session on the foundation today. Um, but just to like where we're going, what the focus is of the foundation. Um, I was looking for Stan. I didn't see Stan on here. Um, but um, I would love it just to take a small bit on that and, and what the site foundation is doing. Where we were yesterday and where we're going tomorrow would be awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, you, we had a, a nice chat there online today, and we have a foundation board meeting. That's probably where Stan is in five minutes. But, you know, the biggest thing people on the call should know is that the foundation is here for you. You know, the foundation's goal every year is to give back every single dime that they raise or every single euro <laughs> that they raise. And they do that in four different ways. You know, one is personal support. If any of you are going through financial troubles, you can't make your membership this year or, or you know, there's, God forbid, you know, uh, an earthquake in Turkey, for example, or another wildfire in Lahaina and in, in Maui, you know, the foundation raises funds for you and gives back to individuals uh, in our industry. So apply for, for personal support if you're going through a tough time. Uh, we also give back to education. So whether that's sending people to global conference with scholarships or we have a new educational scholarship, uh, if you're getting your, your degree or you're getting any kind of higher ed, we want to help you with that. Um, we give our chapters educational scholarships so they can do better educational events for all of you. Uh, and then we support certifications too. So if you want to get your CIS or your CITP, you know, this foundation has been instrumental in helping us redesign those. Um, and then finally, you know, we give back to the industry and the foundation, where, which is valuable research, our, our signature research project, uh, the Incentive Travel Index, and then other ad hoc research is funded by the foundation. So we are so appreciative to our foundation. They have given back tens of millions of dollars um, since they've been around, I think, for about 35 years. If you want to get involved in the foundation, let me know. Um, they're always looking for, for uh, people to be on the foundation. Anne-Marie Rogers on our call is one of our new trustees. We have very passionate trustees that are always um, out there looking for ways to for all of you to get involved. So if you want to give back to site, um, give back and get involved in the foundation. Yeah, I think I think it's always key that it's we're, we're not asking for for the foundation. It's always for especially your chapters or your corporations, make site foundation a part of that, not replace anything. And I think that's always a key thing is like everybody has charities and and um and, and what they're doing. And frankly, you you had mentioned Turkey in your conversation or in your talk a few minutes ago, and it's uh, one of those things. We're gonna be we're gonna be in global conference. We're gonna be in Turkey in gosh uh, like eight weeks, maybe a little bit a little less at this point. Mm -hmm. um, today is the last day for early bird rate, um, and then it goes up. So please take advantage of that. We have a we have a room block over um, at the Conrad where we're being hosted, and that's again that's our global conference. I always say all roads lead to our global conference, and make sure that you do attend. And if you have any questions about anything about Turkey, about um, any comments, questions, concerns, whatever it may be, you know I do want to applaud our staff. Uh, Faye mentioned it on the call uh, when we were talking earlier that our staff is uh, is solely a reason why we are where we are and our members why we are where we are today as far as site goes. The average company is 
lasts about 30 to 35 years. So, Sites should be proud of for the fact that we are here sitting in our 50th anniversary and we're still, we're growing, we're rapidly growing at a rate that is definitely sustainable, but at the sense that we should be proud. And again, that goes to the staff, that goes to our members, our chapter presidents, um, chapters, uh, and, and our IBOT as well, and our foundation. So um, definitely check out uh, the Global Conference is something um, that you're interested in. Again, there are opportunities to get there for hosted buyers that I know some that I think that application has closed, but we can check into that. And then also uh, opportunities through the foundation to get there um, for your registration being hosted. So check that out as well. Um, and then renewal on, on your membership. This is the time uh, I think if we do anything here at site, we're all about networking opportunities. We're about creating opportunities for, for the chapters. But even if you aren't in a chapter, if you're in a location that you don't have a chapter near you, we are working. That is such a focus uh, in 2024 to make sure that we are we are connecting those members as well. And again, those events that happen throughout the year, we're going to be in Newfoundland in July for ISA. We're going to be in Switzerland and in, in Andermatt actually in March uh, for ISC instead of Summit Europe. And then the site classic rounding out those hosted buyer events um, in the late summer, early fall of, of next year um, in, in Miami. These are all opportunities uh, for networking. But again, it just doesn't stop at the events. It stops at it, it goes through all of our networking opportunities, whether the webinars, we have those throughout the year, the Young Leader Program, it's all part of it. If you're not getting something, please voice. We want you, we're only as good as our as our, as our members. So um, those are the kind of the final words that I wanted to, to leave you with. Faye, I would love you to bring you back up to the screen. Is there something that you would love to leave this group with uh, as we sign off uh, at our 50th anniversary? Uh, we're here in December 4th. Uh, exactly 50 years ago, December 4th, we signed, uh, again, ink to paper, uh, organizing site. Is there anything you would like to leave with the group? Yeah, I think there is, especially you, how you've just emphasized all of the amazing events coming up. The knowledge of how to combine is the, is the most important thing in all kinds of knowledge. It's the greatest form of knowledge. And you learn how to combine and be an integrative leader when you go to these conferences because you're hearing from all parts of the industry. Yeah. So I think um, it's a great reason to support all the things you just talked about. Yeah, and again- and Thanks I, so much for inviting me today. I enjoyed yeah. it. I appreciate you, Faye, Faye, as one of our site past presidents, as well as every past president that we've had, um, and leaders, chapter leaders. God, there's so many of you that make, make this uh, site run. Um, Annette, I'm gonna throw it back to you. Thank you for letting me be a part of this um, and rounding out our 50th. I know we're doing a drawing for a site membership. Mm -hmm. um, I think it could be used for uh, renewal or uh, a new member. So I'm going to leave it yes. to you. Thank you, members, everybody, so much for allowing me this opportunity. Thank you, Kevin. You're such a huge ambassador for us. We so appreciate you and your leadership and all the board members and the trustees that are on the call. Thank you for your support. Hey, that's it, gang. Thank you for joining us today. We will let you know. We'll choose randomly and let you know who won the membership. But just... Thank you for your support, not only of site, but of the global incentive travel industry. What we all do is so important to really celebrate human achievement and to build these amazing experiences for everyone. So keep doing what you're doing and have a wonderful holiday season. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank